Thank you for joining us today. My name is Corey, and I'm a teaching artist with Young Audiences of Louisiana, and this is Art to Heart. Today's session is specifically designed for educators. We will be exploring ways that we can use puppetry in our classrooms to help our students with social emotional development. everyone has gathered their materials together and you are ready to get started. We'll start off making our puppet together and then we'll go over some tips and techniques on how to use these puppets in our real life classroom. And a little bonus, these puppets work great for the virtual classroom as well. Okay, step one is to cut out your templates, your patterns for the inside and outside of the mouth. The poster board is going to be for the inside of the mouth. It's a lemon shape or an oval shape. And you'll notice the outside of the mouth is a little bit smaller. That is gonna be the felt mouth. So go ahead and trace those both and cut them out. Now you have your mouth cut out. It is time to glue the inside and the outside of the mouth. Turn your sock inside out. You are going to glue the poster board, flatten it out. You're going to glue the poster board or the cardboard, whatever you've chosen to use on the inside, okay? I fold mine first in half so that it has the crease there. So it's folded and fold it both ways. And that's gonna go right on top of the seam. Why do we want to glue it on top of the seam? Because when you turn it inside out and you glue the felt piece on the outside for the inside of the mouth, that is going to cover the seam. It's gonna line up with this one. So make sure that you have it folded and that it is on the seam. Let's go ahead and glue that on. Okay, you have the inside of your mouth glued on. We're going to turn it inside out and glue the felt piece on the outside of the mouth. Okay, this is the inside of the sock. So let's carefully turn our sock inside out and you'll notice it's already you want to make sure that's dried before you turn it inside out so you don't burn your hand but you know you can already see that it's already moving it's already a mouth so let's turn it inside out and stick our hand in there to get it formed in the correct way because it's going to form in the opposite direction okay the opposite direction. Okay, it looks great so far. This seems a little off, but that's okay. No, no one will even notice that. So now that it's inside out, take a moment and go ahead and glue on your mouth. Now I'm noticing this mouth has a little pointy corners, like more of a lemon shape. That's okay, it's a little big, so I'm gonna trim that up and then glue it on. Okay, our mouth looks good. This is the profile of our puppet right now. Okay, this is the step that we are going to use an extra piece of felt. We're going to roll it up and we're going to insert it above our knuckles so that it gives a fuller head shape. 
So let's go ahead and do that really quickly. You can use an old piece of felt or any kind of material just rolled up. I put a dab of hot glue right there so that it stays rolled up on the inside and then we'll put it right in. Okay, it's time to glue our eyes on. We're going to take our pom-poms, glue them right on the top. Take your other pom-pom and glue it right on the top. Ew, be careful, don't burn yourself. Careful, careful, careful. Okay, so let that dry and then you want to glue on your googly eyes. Okay, I like to give that a second. Now, while that's drying, I'm gonna give you a tip. When you glue on googly eyes, you have to actually glue them upside down. So you put the dab of hot glue on and then you hold it upside down. And that is because if you do not, the inside of the googly eye might actually melt and stick to the bottom and it won't rotate. It'll just be stuck in place, which defeats the purpose of having the googly eye, okay? So all that's gonna look like is you put your dab of glue on the back, then you put it on, I just tip it right over Okay, and then I hold it, and you can even shake it a little bit to make sure you hear it moving around. You want that googly eye to be moving. You want it to be moving. And then same thing for the next googly eye. You put your dab of glue on, and I like to hold it, again, upside down because, and I like to shake it, make sure it's not sticking to it and melting to that piece okay and there we go folks this little guy has some nice little eyes the next thing we're gonna do is glue on the nose I prefer the flat triangle nose you can use a pom-pom um, you can use a big pom-pom and make it dramatic So I'm just gluing that right on and holding it, letting it dry. I don't worry about the wispies of the hot glue until the end. Okay, let's let that little nose dry and then we can cut out and um, cut out our ears and glue on our ears next, our faux fur ears. So we have our beautiful faux fur and hopefully you have your ear pattern. That is gonna be what you trace on the inside of your faux fur. But take a look at the grain of your faux fur. I like to make sure that my fur is gonna be going downwards, and so that will determine where I put my pattern in order to trace it and cut it. So that's the direction that my green goes. That's the way that I want to cut it. So let's trace two ears for each side of the head and cut those out. Okay, let's glue our ears on. Spot a glue right there. The ears are going to go right behind the eyes. And on top of that little area that we added the felt on the inside, okay? So, ideally, these will be flopping around. You may want to shake this faux fur out outside so it doesn't get little fur balls everywhere. So I'm putting them right behind the eyes, the pom-pom eyes. 
Okay, if you want another dot of glue as reinforcement somewhere under there, but you want them to be flopping around, they gotta be floppy, floppy, floppy. Okay, and that's what's gonna give your puppy a little more character. Okay, every, every little puppy is gonna be different. Now it is time to work on the arms and legs, which means we are gonna cut the bottom of our tube sock and cut those pieces up to make our arms and legs. So you probably have a really long sock like me. First thing I'm gonna do is cut that, cut that bottom part off and discard that. That is not going to be part of the arms. First things first, let's go ahead and I'm going to cut about four inches. Let me move my current puppy over and I'm going to do, I'm going to flatten him out. Let me make sure he's nice and flat before I cut. And you can make sure that you use your marker if you need to and just draw a line right across. Actually, let's go ahead and do that. Where you're gonna cut a little light line to keep you on track, okay? So there's our line. I can see it, I hope you can see it at home. And I'm gonna go ahead and just cut that slowly and straight so that that will be my arms and my legs, okay? So this piece is gonna be our arms and our legs. So we just have to figure out how to make this into four equal pieces. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and cut right down the edge there. right alongside the other edge. Okay. And then, oops. And all I have to do is cut it down the middle so that I will have four equal pieces. Let's glue these together. All you have to do is put glue on one edge. Now I use a ruler so I don't burn my hands or scissors, any kind of tool that's gonna allow you to fold it over and not burn your fingers. And then that's gonna dry. And then once that dries, you can turn it inside out and it will be smooth with no seam, okay? So, same thing here. You are going to make sure you have extra glue. Okay, you're gonna just put your glue right along the edge there at the tip, very edge. Now this is a thin sock, so it's getting on my table, so you may wanna protect your table. This is my work table. I'm gonna go ahead and put this under it. Set that one to the side. You're gonna do all four. Once you do all four and they are dry, then you're gonna simply turn them inside out and you will have two arms and two legs. What we're gonna do first is work on the arms. Okay, the arms. Let's see, let's show you guys these arms that go right under the ear and right by that crease in the mouth, okay? So they're gonna be glued kind of right under that crease in the mouth, but in line with the side, almost the back of the body, okay? So these are almost on the back of the body and they don't have to be that even, so. Okay, now I like to trim up the edges. 
okay? And I like to do a little pad, what I call a paw pad. Now, the reason I like to do a paw pad is because it kind of brings it together, in my opinion. You can add whatever little flair you want. This little pad is optional. Okay, and all the pad is, is using a piece of tan felt. That's just my style. That's the one I like to teach folks to use. And I'm just going to make a little tiny oval, the tiniest little oval that can be the hand, the paw. Okay, and then once I have that paw, I could put, that's a paw pad. I could put little pom-poms or other little things like felt. I use a lot of flat black felt for paw pads. Uh, pom-poms are probably the most common that you've seen and they do look lovely and amazing. So here we go. I've got two paw pads ready to be glued on. There's one little thing that I want to note, these stragglies, I'm going to tighten up with scissors and glue so that the end of the leg, the paw, looks good. Okay, it looks good and neat. Now, pom-poms, if you were to glue those on, would just go around like that and then one right in the middle like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that so you can see it. Okay, so now you have your nice sock puppy all ready to go and perform. We'll talk about that in a moment. Go ahead and trim up any loose ends. I like to actually cut and sometimes hot glue the bottom of the sock right behind the legs. So you're welcome to do that. Otherwise, you are ready to name your puppet and to start performing. Now that you've made your sock puppy puppet, it's time to start practicing using it. We'll start by learning four basic emotions, happy, sad, excited, and mad. Sock puppets are really good for a range of emotions. So later you can add in other emotions like scared, surprised, jealous, as you feel comfortable. As you practice these emotions, I want you to start thinking about a name for your puppet and some personality traits. This will help you feel more comfortable when you start using your puppets with your students. So the first emotion that we're gonna work on today is happy. So before you even put your sock puppet on your hand, let me show you what that might look like. Your middle finger is gonna go all the way down your pointer finger and your ring finger are gonna be about parallel. And your thumb and pinky are gonna be all the way up. Okay, that's what your hand will look like inside the puppet. So it should, let's see you guys put on your suck puppy puppets and let's see you make your happy face. Okay, now as you're practicing, you wanna keep looking at your puppet and you can even practice in the mirror. Look at your puppet, make sure it's happy. I can feel that my thumb and my pinky are all the way up in the corners of the mouth. And I have, this is a silly puppet. It has a little tongue hanging out, so that makes it look even happier. Okay, great. Now, sad is almost the opposite. So, it's almost the opposite, where the thumb and pinky go down, the middle finger goes up, and tuck that thumb under your other fingers because we are sad now. Very, very sad. 
And I like that tuck in. That tuck in under the fingers is gonna distinguish the sad face from the mad face. So try that tucked in. And that will, outside of the puppet, this was our happy, it's kind of the opposite. But then the thumbs tucked in under those other fingers. Okay, so try it out. The other face is our excited face. So you're gonna spread your fingers out on the top. You're gonna have the thumbs spread out on the bottom. And your silly bubby is gonna be so excited. So try the excited face. And for your mad face, it's almost the exact opposite of happy. Okay, so similar to sad, but without the tuck in, and then I like to give it a little shake. Okay, <laughs> so you have to experiment. And as you get more comfortable with these four basic emotions, you can add other emotions in. Jealous, frightened, any emotions that your kids bring up in your classes um, would be great to work through. So practice, practice, practice. Before we go today, I wanted to give you a quick feelings frame game that you could play with your students and all you'll need is an empty picture frame like this one. So, there is your sock puppy. All you need to do for this game is hold your puppet into the frame. Your puppet makes an emotion like happy. Once your puppet makes an emotion, you don't shout it out. You let the student say, how is Millie, the silly sock puppy puppet, feeling today? Okay, and they'll raise their hand or shout out happy, excited, whatever emotion you're making. And then that gives you the opportunity for you to say, show me your happy face. Let me see your feelings frame. And then the students, use their hands to make their own feelings frames. Okay, so your prompt is show me your feelings frame because you're the one with the class feelings frame and they don't have a feelings frame. So you're gonna say, show me your feelings frame and then show me your happy face. Okay, and then they show you their happy face. This also can help start a dialogue. So you can ask questions like, what makes you happy? Or turn to a neighbor and tell them one thing that makes you happy. So this can create a dialogue. It can also help one-on-one -on -one if you have to pull a student off to the side that isn't their normal self. So it's a great game to play with your class. And even if you don't have an empty picture frame, you can also use your own hands to make your own feelings frame. When you are developing your puppet voice, you only need to go a little bit higher or a little bit lower than your normal voice. You also want to keep your voice consistent by giving your puppet a name and some personality traits that's really gonna help you to keep that character voice consistent for your students. Thanks for joining us today. I hope that you've made a beautiful sock puppy puppet to use with your students to help them with their social emotional development.